<laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. I uh, I often think of the coaches when I fall behind on stuff, and I'm like, man, they don't have any time. Why can't I manage my time? I'll give you a good example. I need wipers, as everyone does, windshield wipers in Vegas because they rot in like three months. I bought the wipers like four months ago, and they're just sitting in my car, and I never change them. Like, uh, I'm not asking. I'm not asking you to change my wipers, but can, like, can you do stuff like that, or is that something you have to farm out because you're so busy? You're like, someone please change my wipers. Oh, the the minutia, the nuance, the sprinkler guy, all of that coordinating is <laughs> is a uh, you're moving you're moving mountains to try to get the littlest task done. So uh, I feel you on that one. Yeah, it's like uh, like the quarterback documentary that Steve's referring to, Coach. Like uh, Kirk Cousins, at one point he tells the audience, he's like, "Yeah, I'm so focused on football, my wife picks up my outfits. I can't even do that." <clears throat> Yeah, I, I think uh, that might be like Steve Jobs when he just went to that one <laughs> outfit because I don't have time to waste time making decisions on what to wear, you know. I get my uh, done because definitely I, a real a real problem. I generally wear a black golf shirt every day because at the last minute I'm getting dressed and I'm like, ah, the 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 black shirt. That's uh, we're gonna go with that. Did you go on vacation or is it coming up? No, we got away. We got the, we went to Yellowstone for a little bit. Um, spent some time out there. I'm not much of a, a snowbird, so I go up there uh, when the sun shines and it's nice. So, what is Yellowstone like now? Because I've, I've read it, like it's blown up in terms of the people there. Like, can you still enjoy it? I mean, does it or does it feel like it's overrun or it's still very natural? Oh no, it's very much an amusement amusement park at this really? point. I mean, there's there's people everywhere. Um, it's uh, it's quite a zoo, no doubt. It's weird too. You see videos of people walking up to wild animals, you know. Big wild animals, you know, it's, it's strange. You're a, you're a big guy. I assume you're not going to walk up to a uh, buffalo and start poking at it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know. You know, I'm, even my dog likes his space. So I, I, I see those people, too, and I'm not quite sure how they think it's going to go. Uh, it goes poorly, generally. Uh, Nate Longshore is with us, yep. tight end coach from uh, UNLV. You know, I, I didn't get a chance to ask you in the spring, and it's kind of a, a strange delivery on this, but you're one of the holdover coaches, so – What's that process like? Uh, you know, they decide to move in a different direction from Marcus Arroyo. I'm sure at that point you're like, well, I'm screwed. Or you know, are you contacted almost immediately like, hey, Nate, you know, we'd like to keep you around. Do you have to go through a whole interview process? Does, does Odom call you? How does it work? No, there's, there's definitely uh, some limbo there. You're not quite sure. Um, you, you've obviously, you're putting out calls and trying to see uh, what all your options are at the same time. You know, you've got your wife and family and friends and they like what they've got going on and she's got her work too and it's it's a it's an elaborate kind of delicate dance and you know i had known coach odom um we have a few few mutual friends and they had all spoke very highly of them so i, I kind of made an effort to you know if i, if I had the opportunity I, I want to be retained and i want to stick around and try to see this thing through so the opportunity arose and uh, i was excited and, and thrilled to be a part of it so you see the potential in this program. I'm sure you you know you guys built something with the last regime. Uh, I'm sure you're excited to kind of take the next couple of steps. Last year, you guys were very close in a five and seven season to winning you know six, seven, or eight. And, and honestly, we you know we did our little piece, uh, but I, I think it's kind of a collective effort of of a lot of people, a lot of years, a lot of staff. I mean this this program has been it, it, it's not easy you know, building a program. And so I, I'm i grateful for the guys that came even before us. I mean, they're the fruits of their labor. We reap some of those benefits. And now the current staff that I'm on is, is doing the same. So everyone's kind of played a part. And I, I hope at some point, you know, this thing obviously turns and, and gets over that hump. And I think everyone that was prior to can, can have a little pride in knowing that, that their piece helped help accomplish the mission so you expressed you know the desire to stick around from your position now too when then you're like okay i'm here i'm sticking around did you were you familiar with the offensive system that you're going to be coaching in here what is that transition like for you do you immediately start studying up on it what was it like learning what you're going to start doing now from an offensive perspective i mean honestly across college football very much everybody's kind of doing the same thing you know you're trying to exploit matchups create leverage find some numbers somewhere um, it, 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 you do this as many hours as we do as coaches, and it, it's all the same stuff. You're trying to get somebody open and score a touchdown, you know. Um, 
you know, sometimes we take it for granted trying to tell the kids that it's all the same stuff. It's not quite the same to them, right. but, uh, you know, the, the nuance and understanding kind of, you know, what we're trying to do is, you know, that's how you see these quarterbacks, you know, get picked up on a Wednesday and they can start on Sunday. It's a lot of, a lot of similar stuff going on. So for the guys, for the tight ends in the go-go offense, what's the hardest thing to learn or adjust to that might be different from what they played in? Is it, you know, running routes? Is it pass blocking? Is it run blocking? Um, I would I would say just the verticality within the within the passing game. I mean, a lot of times we were utilized in the passing game prior um, as you know a, a component of protection or um, you know an outlet, and now being able to kind of run and open up the field and, and be a vertical threat uh, that's that's definitely an adjustment, but a, a welcome one. Am I wrong in thinking that tight end is like a somewhat unforgiving position? Like you have to, you're going to be involved in run blocking. You're going to be involved in pass blocking. Sometimes you have to run routes and maybe never get a target for like 30 consecutive <laughs> routes. It seems like a somewhat unforgiving position at times. It's uh, we we have this graphic and it's we're the Swiss Army knife. Yeah. You know, we a little bit of everything. I mean, you even see Kelsey throwing the ball on plays now. You're running it, you're throwing it, you're catching it, you're blocking. You got to know the run game. You got to know the pass game. It's, a little bit of everything, and most likely 60 plays of the game, you're not going to touch it. So um, it's, it's a selfless position, but definitely a complicated one having to uh, you know, be involved in all phases. Nate Longshore is on Cofield and Company, ESPN Las Vegas, the opener for the Rebels, September 2nd at Allegiant Stadium, UNLVtickets.com, which is where you grab your tickets for that first game against Bryant. Very aggressive home schedule with uh, Vandy coming into town a couple of weeks after that one, uh, let's talk about some of the tight ends. Um, what's the next step, uh, and can he get there for Shelton Zeon? Yeah, I think uh, the, the progress that he's made since I've been here, going into you know year four now and seeing the progression of his career and, and his development, uh, he really took ownership and, and being a point of attack blocker last year and, and was one of the better blocking tight ends in the conference. I think now... With, with adding some elements to the passing game, being able to incorporate his speed and athleticism into the passing game and get him as a downfield threat uh, should round out his, his NFL prospect, uh, you know, uh, bio. Uh, fans should be encouraged by at least what, what I saw at spring practice, and that was that Charlie Williams, one of your newcomers, and Christian Earls, they were both out there a lot. They were getting a lot of action. Um, I assume they're different type guys, but am I typecasting by the size because Earls is you know six eight and two fifty five? Do they have a similar skill set or are they different? Um, I would say those guys are different. I think we've got Kaleo uh, Balunge, who is similar to Earls. They're both six seven, six eight basketball guys with range and elite ball skills, um, kind of mismatch type of guys. Um, Shelton Zion's your traditional wide balance. He can help you in the run game, the pass game, um, a little bit of everything. Charlie Williams is a big, he's a big receiver. I mean, he was uh, one of those taller receivers that kept working out in the weight room and became a, a tight end. So his, his route skills and his ability to separate uh, as a receiver kind of put him in a different class of his own in my room. Um, he's still got a ways to go. He's young, but is uh, having that extra six months as a high schooler, getting here early to to get ready for the season. I definitely see him contributing this fall. So we also we all know about like the basketball backgrounds, right? When it comes to tight ends, when you're out and about and like scouting some players, are you swinging by basketball gyms every once in a while? It's like sticking your head no, in you, like, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Those those ball skills and. Uh, the, you know, body control, all that stuff is invaluable as far as tight ends go. So. Nate Longshore is with us, the uh, tight ends coach with UNLV. So I wanted to ask you, I know, you know, technically it's not the group that you're working with, but you guys all work together. I mean, the tight end is part of the offensive line unit. I find the offensive line this year fascinating because there's a lot of new parts. You know, Tiger Shanks is one of the guys that's a holdover, and I'm sure he's going to challenge hard for one of those tackle spots. Um, how much competition is there going to be at tackle? It, you know, it was interesting to see Marcus Miller out there playing a lot of left tackle. I saw him, I think, I think it was Phil Steele who had him, like four-team all-conference at tackle. The, the tackle competition, once you guys really get going over those five weeks, is going to be pretty intense. 
Yeah, and that's kind of, you know, that's the beauty of a, of a new staff. You know, if you're a guy and you feel like, you know, you've been overlooked and you bring a new staff in, maybe you get some renewed energy and motivation, and, and it kind of opens up the opportunities for everybody to kind of showcase and, and kind of recommit to the process. Um, but I think in, at the end of the day, you're going to end up with a, with a better product, just them all competing, pushing each other. Uh, I, I look for that group to kind of be the the cornerstone of the offense, and, and we'll go as they go for sure. So, Nate, building on what John was saying about you know scouting basketball games, um, we can't mention, you can't, uh, the guys that you've got verbally committed for 2024, but even when, when the, you guys land, say, a linebacker who's got either tight end sa- a size or you know projects to be that kind of size, do you keep an eye on them? You can be, obviously, position changes happen all the time. I'll, I will say this. The linebacking crew right now, I mean, is incredibly deep, so there might be some you know, uh, room for changes in the future. Do you keep an eye on the guys when they commit? A, a, and a lot of them are you know, two-way players in high school anyway. Yeah, 100%. I mean, for us, the objective is to get the best 11 on the field, and sometimes that's on your own team on the other side of the ball. Uh, so as you know, and the, the D line coach is looking at O line guys, and the O line coach is looking at the D line guys. And we're uh, we're constantly uh, recruiting each other's guys uh, when we're in the meal room. Is there a game that you know you specifically are looking forward to this year? You know, maybe based on past results, or you've already started to look at matchups. A game that you're extra excited for, not only for the team but for the tight end group. Honestly, not. In, I mean. Each of the individual games is, is, you know, trivial as far as I, I see the year of development. Uh, for me, I'm just excited to see these guys continue to, to grow and get better as a, as a tight end unit. I think every game will be a, a great opportunity to, for them to, to continue making strides and to showcase kind of the progress that they've made. Um, so in that sense, I'm excited for, for every game for them to have a chance to, you know, go put some, some new film on tape. Coach, we'd appreciate a couple of minutes. Thanks for the long conversation, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks when you guys are uh, going live and uh, media can be around. We very much appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, guys, and all the best.